Well, hello, Shoreline. Last week, we looked at the great Christ hymn from Philippians chapter 2. Now we're going to go to the next book of the New Testament, Colossians, and we're going to look at chapter 1, the great Christological passage that just gives this picture of Jesus with such purity, with such precision, with such power. And so listen to these words from Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 15, and I'll read all the way down through verse 20. The Son is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, dwell in Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Man, if you want to know who Jesus is, if you want the story of the gospel, Colossians chapter 1, and it's it's all there. Just a few observations as we walk in and kind of walk through this week and as we continue walking through with Jesus through this week. First of all, he created everything. All things were created by him. I encourage you to notice what God has made. Notice the beauty of creation. We live in a uniquely beautiful place. If I'm, if I'm driving from Costco, kind of coming back into Monterey, there's a spot on the highway where you kind of come over the hill and you get this glimpse of the ocean to the right and you get the, the glimpse of the Monterey Bay. There's something just so beautiful that the heavens declare the glory of God, the earth proclaims his presence. And so just notice God in the sky, notice God in the beauty of the Salinas Valley. I love driving the Salinas Valley in the early morning as the sun's coming up or in the evening as the sun is setting, how the shadows fall across the valley. It's beautiful. God made it all. And when you're noticing what God has made, don't miss what God said is the most important thing he made, people. Notice the people around you. God's beauty revealed in creation. And then Paul goes on to say that in him, all things hold together. Not only is Jesus Christ the creator of all things, he is the sustainer. Every day you walk through, every day you make it through, every tough situation you face, if you are being sustained, Jesus is there. The fact that the sun rises and sets again and that our world continues to spin on its axis, Jesus is there. He is the sustainer of your personal life and of all of the universe, it's all in his hands. It's amazing to think that the one who sustains the universe sustains your life and mine, but he does. He created all things, he sustains all things, and then we learn in this passage that he is supreme over all things. Jesus Christ is supreme, he is glorious, he is worthy of worship, he is worthy of praise. Celebrate his glory and his power every day and every moment. One of the things I've said through this last six months, through this whole time of COVID, this whole time of sheltering in place and face masks and all the tensions that have been experienced in our world, one of the things I've said again and again in these devotions is this, that God is still on the throne. He rules and reigns. He is supreme. But, but what, about, what about when it doesn't feel like it? What about when things seem like they're out of control? Is God still on the throne? Yes. God is God. He is supreme, supreme and he rules over all. And then, one of the things I love is near the end of this passage is he is the one who reconciles. Through his cross, through his bloodshed, through the price that he paid, he reconciles to himself all things and all people who are willing to be reconciled. His grace is enough for everyone. It's offered to everyone. We have to choose to take hold of it and be reconciled. I want to challenge you today, if you're a follower of Jesus, will you delight in what he has done for you. He has made a way. He's brought you home. If you're watching this, you're not yet a Christian. I will tell you, Jesus is the great reconciler. He wants to bring you to the heart of the Father. He wants to forgive you and heal you. And if you want to learn more about becoming a follower of Jesus Christ, I encourage you to call Shoreline Church and say, I want to know more about following Jesus. Can I talk with a pastor? We will have a pastor get on the phone right away. If there's no one on campus, we'll have one call you as soon as possible. 
but Jesus Christ is the great reconciler. Well, this is another one of my top 10 favorite passages. Philippians chapter 2 last week, and then Colossians chapter 1 this week, celebrating the person of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I pray as we walk into this week, as we, as we continue through, as we, as we walk into the weekend, Lord, that we will walk in your presence, in your power, in your glory, knowing that you are the great creator, you are the great sustainer, you are the savior and reconciler. Let us walk in your presence. And Lord, as we gather together this weekend to worship, will you meet with us? Will you continue to teach us as we do this amazing walk through the book of Romans? Bring it alive in our hearts and teach us to love you and follow you. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you again to join us in the courtyard for worship services this Sunday or online Sunday morning and Sunday evening. We have times with services. Join us and I'll look forward to seeing you this Sunday as we worship and continue walking through the book of Romans together. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week.